And here we have another example of a polynomial function. Please note that this polynomial function has degree 4. I'm giving you two factors, so that means you can use synthetic division to go from degree 4 to 3 to 2 when you take out those two factors, and you'll be left with something that is degree 2, which is going to be quadratic, and we know how to solve that. So we are tasked with finding all of the zeros and all of the intercepts. Now, I'm going to do this a little bit differently. And suppose we start at the very top here, and we try to list what our zeros are. So our zeros, from here, that's going to be a positive 1. From here, uh, that's going to give me a negative 5, which will be the same as the k values that we use for synthetic division. And we expect to get two more solutions. Um, just don't know what they are. So we're going to find those here in just a moment. For our intercepts, we already know something about our x-intercepts. Since these two guys are real, they will each correspond to an x-intercept. So 1, 0 and negative 5, 0. Now, since this is degree 4, we could have up to two more x-intercepts. It's all based on if these other two zeros are real. If they are imaginary, uh, then I don't have anything. won't have any more x-intercepts. Uh, the y-intercept. Every polynomial function is going to have a y-intercept, and they're all going to look like this, 0, comma, something. And here, when you plug in 0, the only thing that's going to be left is negative 5. All right, so now this is where we do synthetic division to try to break this down to go from degree 4 to degree 2. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with that. All right, so my column headings, that's k, x to the fourth, x to the third, x squared, x, and then my constant. And I understand that my remainder is supposed to be zero. If it's not, we've done something wrong. All right, so it doesn't matter which of these guys you start with. If you want to start with this one or that one, it doesn't really matter. So for this one, let's go ahead and start here. I know it's a little bit different than what's in the handout, but it's still going to work out to be the same. My k value is 1, so the same value as the 0 we have there, so I'm going to put it 1 here. x to the 4th, so that's going to be 1x to the 4th, minus 2x to the 3rd, minus 28x squared, plus 34x, minus 5. First things first is to bring down the 1. And as we've done so many times so far, uh, we just need to multiply and add. So 1 times 1 is 1. Combine, we get negative 1. Multiply to get negative 1. Combine to get negative 29. Times 1 again. And now we get positive 5. And for the last time, 5 times 1 is 5, we get a remainder of 0, which is exactly what we're supposed to have. This goes from x to the 4th for the lead term to x to the 3rd. And if you wanted to, just for understanding, that's your x squared term, that's x, and this is your constant. And so now we're going to do synthetic division a second time. And the second time that we do it, we're using the other k value, the other 0 that we have. So the other 0 was negative 5. So we're going to use negative 5 right here and perform synthetic division again. So it's going to go from x to the 4th to x to the 3rd. Now it's going to go to x squared. So bring down the 1. Multiply times negative 5. We get negative 5. Add to get negative 6. Multiply to get positive 30. Add to get 1. Multiply times negative 5. We get negative 5, and again, we get a remainder of 0, which is what we're supposed to have. If you don't get a remainder of 0, that means you've messed up your sign somewhere, or you didn't really understand 
what your zero was. All right, so now that we have this, and this is going to be our x squared, our x, and our constant term. Okay, so let's set that up as our equation and solve it. So we have x squared minus 6x plus 1 is equal to 0. If we go through the process, the, the progression that we have for solving a quadratic equation, we should be able to easily find a method that works well for us. Uh, square root property doesn't work because I have x in two different terms. Factoring doesn't work because I don't get factors of 1 that add to 6. So what about completing the square? This is a 1. This is an even number. So completing the square is going to be the best thing for us. So to complete the square, we move the 1 to the other side, so that's negative 1. And then we figure out what goes in the gap here. We understand that we're trying to find something so that it factors as the exact same two factors. And the way we do that is the same trick, divide by 2 and square it. So half of negative 6 is negative 3. Negative 3 squared is positive 9 that we're going to add to both sides here. Like that. All right, on the right side we get positive 8. And now we use the square root property to finish solving this equation. Don't forget the plus or minus. It's very important to us. Don't forget the plus or minus. All right, so now we get x minus 3 is equal to plus or minus 8 breaks down as 4 times 2. So you've got this extra piece here in the problem where you have to simplify a radical. The square root of 4 is 2, and this 2 stays inside the radical because it's not a perfect square. We finish solving for x by moving the 3 to the other side. 3 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 2. So, to recap, we went from degree 4 down to degree 2. We already knew what two of our zeros were because they were given to us. Then we used the quadratic that we were left with and we solved that equation to find the two remaining zeros. So, let's take these guys and put them back up here at the top. So, our other zeros, we have 3 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 2. All right. Now we have to identify, figure out, uh, do these guys give us x-intercepts? Now I know that it has a square root here, but it's not imaginary. So as long as, it, as, long as the 0 is real, that gives us an x-intercept. So that means each of these numbers, one with the plus and one with the minus, would correspond to an x-intercept. So you would say 3 plus 2 square roots of 2 comma 0 and then the other one is going to be 3 minus 2 square roots of 2 comma 0. You get four real zeros which in turn means you have four x-intercepts and then of course there's that y-intercept too. Now it seems all well and good right now but what if the information that I give you at the beginning is not so nice? What if I give you something that's imaginary? Let's find out what happens, shall we?